Hello everyone, welcome back to Bookworm. This week we are covering um, a pretty good book, uh, The Millionaire Next Door. So let me ask you, sorry, got my notes, I got my book, let's get started. So the question that I wanna ask you guys, so, um, so why are we not all wealthy and living out the dream life we see on TV? There are literally a million ways to answer this question, uh, but today we are going to look at Dr. Stanley and Dr. Denko's uh, The Millionaire Next Door, and we're gonna see what they have to say about why everyone's not a millionaire. All right, um, so first I wanna start off with a little bit of a definition. Uh, the book, uh, right out the gate, defines wealth, and the way that the book defines wealth is um, wealth is not what you spend, but what you accumulate. Um, and basically what they're saying, and it's, it's the biggest point of the book, is basically when you look around at the world and you see people and they're, they're driving fast cars, they're living in big houses, uh, they've got the newest cell phones, they've got, you know, everything is big. They've got boats that they're pulling behind their, you know, brand new SUVs and things like this. And what the book, what, what this book tries to teach us is when you see those things, don't automatically um, make the assumption that that person's wealthy. Because um, the billionaire next door is basically, the, they do a rundown of all the stats, right? So there are millionaires everywhere. You probably see one all the time, maybe once a week or something like that if you commute normally. Uh, you just don't know it. So these, these are people whose assets are worth uh, and, and their liquids are worth up to a million dollars or over. Um, and then there's, of course, the deck of millionaires and, and things like that. So um, I, I first wanna talk about one part of the book that I, I thought was awesome and, and it's almost perfect. So there are these um, two doctors. And once again, I, I try not to give too many details of a, of a book. I try just to give an all, overall summary and then how I would rate the book. This one is probably five out of five stars, by the way, as far as uh, the genre that it's in. Um, but really quick, one story. So there's two doctors, and both these doctors are specialists in their field, uh, and they make around $700,000 a year apiece. Now, one is very frugal, and the other one lives the lifestyle of a very high-paid doctor. So these guys, um, I, I personally don't know any doctors, but as the book describes it, you know, doctors live a certain lifestyle. They have to go to certain types of parties and, and all these things to mingle uh, with peers uh, who are on their level as far as um, income and, and education and all those types of things. Um, and then, of course, there are political parties and, and all those types uh, of dinners and things that they, they get together to talk about. Um, now, one of these doctors, like I said, is very frugal. He um, lives in an average... A house drives an average car and him and his family spend an average amount of money on certain things the other doctor who makes the seven hundred thousand dollars as well uh, some of the things that uh, he spends his money on so they said uh, thirty five thousand dollars a year his family spends just on clothes he gets a new car every year and they live in a multi-million dollar home uh, so that's not frugal. And, and then the other doctor is very frugal. They said if the other doctor was to lose his job now, the frugal doctor, if he was to lose his job today, he could retire and continue to live the, the lifestyle that he lives now for the rest of his life. The other doctor, if he was to lose his job today and not be able to, assuming he wasn't able to get another job, he would have enough money in his account to last him six months. And then he would have to start selling the cars, selling the house, selling the clothes, and that sort of thing. So that's the difference. One can retire permanently and the other one could retire for six months. That's the difference between uh, the wealth and the spending. Um, so one of the big points uh, to think of it simply, simply, uh, and, and this is actually the name of one of the chapters, you aren't what you drive, okay? Um, there was another study that these guys did on um, what they called um, economic outpatient care. These are people these are children of the affluent. So these are these are kids and people who um, have parents who um, were hardworking, entrepreneurs, highly educated people, people who are affluent, and then the kids are not the same. Uh, there was one story about um, a couple, and they lived in a very high-class neighborhood, but they had a, a middle-class, lower-class income. So they each made, I think, between fifty and seventy-five thousand dollars a year, but they lived extravagantly and a big nice home just like their parents and every year um i think it was the wife i think it was her parents who had all the money they would give them like it for christmas or whatever fifty thousand dollars 
These kids would spend the money so quick that before the year was over, they were asking for, um, they were basically asking for next year's money. Like they had art, they had went through all their money and they were literally broke. No money in the bank, anything like that. But they were living in a high class neighborhood. They weren't even paying to have their own yards landscaped is, is how bad uh, they explained it. So these kids, and, and th this is everywhere. What happens is they become so dependent upon their, their parents and their parents think, if I just give them this, I'll give them 50,000, that's enough for them to start a business and get their life together. However, if the kids know the money's gonna keep coming, they won't work hard and they won't develop a sense of um, work ethic and they won't, they won't drive to survive on their own. They'll always expect that money from their parents. And so what actually happens is when these affluent parents are giving these, their kids all this money, they're actually um, cutting the legs out from underneath them. They're, they're hurting them more than they're helping them. And, and that's another big point of the book. Um, uh, one of the final chapters goes into um, uh, find your, your niche. Um, is, it's basically you know going out there and, and finding what you're good at and, and finding a way to monetize it. Um, it also goes into um, basically follow the money. So there are affluent people, rich people, wealthy people all over the place. And although the, bo the book talks about um, millionaires become millionaires because they're very frugal, so uh, you might think, why would um, a millionaire who's frugal buy your product? Well, generally they, they don't buy just all the technology, all the new TVs, and they don't throw their money away. But what they do spend their money on is something that we could all create and then take advantage of those markets. So uh, tax attorneys, um, financial planners, um, just the type of people to help them with their money and help keep them affluent is basically. So if you could specialize in those fields and, and create a company based around those things, you would attract affluent people and in turn, uh, the theory is you yourself would become affluent or rich or wealthy. So my opinion, uh, the book for the genre that it's in, uh, this was a good book for me. I, I enjoyed it a lot. Um, five out of five stars for this one. Um, so awesome book. I highly recommend it. Once again, it's Thomas J. Stanley and William D. Denko, both uh, PhDs. Uh, so very intelligent, very articulated book, but still very easy to read. So. Um, not not hard to understand. It's just uh, very simple, very straightforward. Case study after case study after case study. So they're not just giving you these theories. They're actually giving you knowledge and backing it up with with uh, studies. Um, so that's it for Friday. Um, coming Monday, I'm going to review this book here, uh, The Intelligent Investor by Benjamin Graham. Uh, just really quick, this is the guy uh, that Warren Buffett uh, trained under and worked for. This was the guy that taught Warren Buffett what he knows. Uh, so this is an awesome book and we are going to check this one out uh, Monday. So if you can get your hands on this one or if you want to try to read it, uh, do that and then we'll review it Monday. If you can't get your hands on it, don't worry. I'm going to go over it. I'm going to give you um, my perspective on it. Uh, I'll rate it and I'll let you know what I think and then you can make a better judgment on whether or not this is a book you wanna buy or even read. All right guys, uh, thanks for watching my video.